Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before diesel um, So, if these videos come out in any sort of order, well, these ones will be delayed a bit compared to the original one. Look, I don't know, is that... I don't know if the original one came out. You know the two Hiluxes fighting to get into the Proto Hospital. Was that... Did I let that out already? No, okay, so it's not out yet. So there's going to be a couple of Hiluxes fighting to get in. You know, we got one in the left corner, one in the right corner, and this sort of thing carrying on. So... Once you see that one, after that one, you'll see the 2012 Hilux. There's a bit of catch can information on it. Then you'll see the road test. It come up really well. I'm really impressed. There's a video about that. And it also includes injector cost. Now, this is the 2008 Hilux video. So those two Hiluxes, a few videos on each one. And this is a 2008, remember? So it's 13 years. And it doesn't look like these injectors have been out for <laughs> at least 13 years either by the looks of them. And remember how many cases it had done? Do you remember from that video? Because I don't remember. It was 220 something, 220, getting close to the 230 though. And you know 230 is the danger zone. You know how we say, you know, change them at 170 ish is probably safe for the older vehicles, 150 because the injectors aren't as good as the later ones, blah, blah, blah. You can stretch the later ones, 170, 180, 190 a bit. You can go to 200 if you like, but don't push it too far. And I wouldn't be going over 200 because this is what you're going to end up with, okay? So. Let's have a bit of a look. We've got number one injector and number four injector came out and number two and three are not coming out by hand. So what we're gonna do now is a bit of a dodgy. A lot of people are gonna be uh, saying this is dodgy and they can say whatever they like. It doesn't really bother me uh, because we've been doing this for years and this is what shifters are made for. Mate, can you please be my assistant and get that bloody shifter onto one of those injectors? And give it a bit of a twist and see how easily. Remember, we've got to be careful of the camshaft lobes. We've got the camshaft lobes pointing downwards out of the way. So even if we were to slip and hit something, we're not going to uh, do any damage here. And that's what we'll do if we've got to put any substantial amount of pressure. It's turning, so that's a good start. So my money's on definitely. Hear that? I'll shut up for a minute. Oh yeah, so that's really tight. All right, take a break, mate. I can see that. That took that took a lot a, a lot of pressure to just twist that. So now what we need to do, um, actually, do you want to get on the other one just quickly? Let's see if number three moves. Careful of those cam lobes. Don't put as much pressure on this one. If it takes a lot of pressure, we'll uh, turn the camshafts. We'll just work on number two before we get to number three. I knew this would have blow by. You can't have an 08 with 230,000 Ks almost without having the because it's just based on averages. This is what I say, I, I know these engines, I know these injectors, I know these cars, and if, well, that one sounds like it's got a bit more grit on it. All right, hear that, guys? Hear the first one, it was a real, have a listen to the difference. Right, that's just started blow-by. There's probably no oil down to the bottom of the injector, mate. Give it a break, mate. Just relax. There's no, there's no, he's loving it, mate. He can't wait to play with these things and get them out, right? Um, you know, these are the things people are scared of, right? But I'll tell you what, you don't have to be scared. I've done enough of these. It's all easy now, right? But it's not easy. It still takes time. It's time consuming and the extra cleaning and all that. So there's definitely going to be some slab involved in this one. Coronas, right? Coronas? No, Coronas. Heineken. Coronas. Heineken sounds, when I'm doing it. Sounds like it's going to be uh, about three slabs of each. Anyway, so uh, at the end of the day, we need some stock of beers for uh, Christmas, don't we? Christmas break. So what about six slabs of Heineken, six slabs of Corona? Anyway, with all jokes aside, you can work out if it's a joke or not and whatever the case may be. But we're about to run out of battery. So we're going to get to work on this. Now, the one at the front, number two, most likely it's just blow by and there's no oil come down. That's good for the cleaning. It's not as messy, but it's very hard to get it out because the oil leaking down from that O-ring is the lubrication that helps it come out. This one, I suggest, is going to have a um, bit of carbonisation around it from the oil leaking down and the compression cooking that oil. Um, so, But he said it wasn't blowing um, smoke on startup. So you can have these issues. Just because you haven't got smoke on startup or a blocked oil pickup, you can still have these issues and they can cause quite a bit of problems. Obviously, the injector's baked because compression's going up past the bottom of the injector. That's not what it's designed to do. The seats are leaking. We've got compression leaks, you know. So things just aren't working anywhere near right at the moment. 
So what we're going to do, I'm going to go put this on charge because the battery is flat. That's why the light's going off. So if I turn this light off, we're in the dark, right? So I have to charge this one up. We're going to prepare ourselves. We'll work on number two first because we've got the um, camshaft lobe C around here. Number three, just in case we slip, we don't want to damage those lobes, although it would be quite hard to damage them to be quite honest. But um, anyway, we won't slip anyway, and uh, but we like to have plan B, C, D in place. This is going on the charger and we'll get prepared and maybe we'll be able to show you so I'm going to show you the whole process because we could be I've been here sometimes getting these out for hours because it might look easier to twist it twisting it's one thing getting it out's another that's a whole nother story and you need to be able to lever it upwards so a big pry bar on that camshaft there on that you know unmachined area you know that raw cast area levering upwards on the injector outlet side here and to be honest you can have some big pry bars with it and they flex and whatever and you just there's it's just really hard work getting them out you can get pulls that don't work because pulling on its own doesn't work you need to be like pulling and twisting i could hang uh the vehicle up from the roof overnight and they wouldn't come out it needs to be heaps of pressure pulling and also twisting to get it out is the only thing that works so there's a little trade secret that you may have may not have seen on 4 before diesel before but there's no point having secrets is there so there it is we've just told you that's what works your big pry bar underneath this area right here careful not to knock any of these lobes you're levering upwards on the injector while twisting it and at this stage a, sh a big shifter on the injector inlet around that side has worked so far but you need to be very careful not to slip and generally it's a one-man job because if you've got two what happens is you're not in sync with each other. You need to sort of bounce your leverage on your left side over here, levering to push up at the same time as you're twisting at the other side. Because if it doesn't happen at the same time, you end up twisting or levering. And neither works. You can lever this to the end of the day and it's not going to come out. You can twist it. It's not coming up. They need to happen in sync. All right, I'm going to charge up and then we'll get on with it. Uh, so we've been mucking around with a little bit and uh, it is happening slowly. And we're starting to make some progress. I think it's going to start moving a bit more. I think uh, so far you're up to one Coronas. Anyway, we'll keep working away at it. All right, still working away at it. It's a slow process. These things happen slowly. Definitely uh, one slab of Coronas and... Two slabs of Heineken. Two slabs of Heineken, mate. Beautiful. <laughs> Look at that, eh? Anyway, so it looks like we're starting to make better progress. It's coming up. It's coming. Anyway, we'll keep working at it. Right, get in there, round three. Here we go. Bang, round three, round four, round uh, round three on the joke, on the beer joke. Oh, we're up to three three slabs of uh, Corona now. Oh, look, it's about to pop out. That's it. Look at that. Beautiful. We have a number two injector. Can't wait till we see. Let, let's just take a cut again, then we can go four slabs. Oh, wow, well, this is like four days later. I mean, no, four hours later, four days later, four weeks later. Oh, it's four slabs later. No, it's not quite that many. Let's just see. Have a look at this. As predicted, right? Now, let's lay... Can you please lay that down for me, mate? That's it. Perfect, because this is, this is no surprise to me, right? Did I not describe? Go back to the start of the video, right? Now, the problem you had was because you held the injector standing up too long or we all ran down all right so what i what we should have done is got it laid it down more quickly let's have a look at this side if you stand the injector up too long you can see all the oils run down what we dealt with is as explained was the beginning of blow by right and what happens the first thing that happens here is the injector seat starts leaking checking your oil pickup at this point in time or any time soon after now even the next couple thousand k's maybe even five or 10,000 is gonna tell you absolutely nothing about what's happening with these injector seats. That's why you change them as prevention, right? You know, the 170K thing, you know? Seven years, 170, general general guideline. We've demonstrated in the videos. If you're not sure, what do you think I'm trying to pull your leg or something? Watch the videos and just have a look at all the things we show you and you determine. You don't need to trust me. Look at the information, what I'm showing you. You've got no reason to show you anything other than what it is. These are the original injectors. How do we know? See that little stamp there? Told you we've been doing this a while. I told you what was going to happen. This was going to be the beginning of blow-by. Really dry. Did you hear the squeaking? None of this oil. See that oil that's there now? None of that oil that's there now was there 
when we were trying to get it out because it's still sealed at this o-ring here the oil galleries up here in this area it hadn't come down once we get it free after all that squeaking and bloody pulling and squeaking and levering for eight slabs <laughs> oh you know sorry i mean four heineken and four corona anyway no no it's look I'll be honest here, it's a, it's a couple of slabs each, mate. What do you reckon? A couple of Corona, a couple of something like that, anyway. A cool. couple of extras on that. Look, we try not to charge for it because that's why I said the price varies. But when there's extra work like this, as long as it's not catastrophic and there's parts involved and there's costs and whatever, this is where if I text you about a slab or two slabs, to be quite honest, I'm not joking, you know? It, it's not a joke. It's I've done extra work to the value of hundreds of dollars and all we're asking for is a slab or two slabs or if I say four slabs, we've done quite a bit of extra work, right? In this case, there's a few things on the vehicle, not a big deal. We haven't even got the other bloody injector out yet and I'm still talking. So I just want to demonstrate, right? Like I said, so have some trust that, you know, I know what I'm talking about. I told you what it was going to look like before. If you're not sure, go back to the start of this video, watch it again and you go, wow, how did he know? What's happened then, the oil's run down, that's what's made it wet, right? So what we need to do is when we get them out, we need to get them out and lay them down quickly before the oil runs down the injector and makes it all look wet and hides that dry problem. These ones are the hardest ones to get out. Now, this is not as bad as a brass washer injector. These are copper washers. The brass washer injectors, they can be 200 times more stuck than this in 20,000 kilometres. Absolutely ridiculous which is where I say you've got to be careful who you let work on your vehicle and where do you go and get your parts, right? What we're going to do now, we're going to uh, go and let the client know he needs to go and borrow his mate's trailer to go to Dan Murphy's and start loading up those slabs. While I do that, we'll get this injector out of the way and we'll start work on the next one. The next one's going to be much easier to get out. It'll probably only cost two slabs. Mate, did you think all those slabs included the one we haven't done yet? Nah, mate, this is uh, per injector. No, no, just joking. I reckon the other one's going to come out pretty easy. And what you're going to see is, see this little bit of carbon that started? You're going to see more of that. It's not going to be massive. It's not going to be the worst one we've ever seen. But it's going to be having a bit of carbon on it, on this area here, and a little few bits up here. It's going to come out reasonably easy, but we've got all that extra cleaning up to do. So it's probably going to be, to be honest, what do you reckon, another slab of Heineken? So this job's probably going to be, in all honesty, what it's going to be is up to the client because we can't force you to pay Heineken's. We can't force you to provide gift cards for Dan Murphy's or anything else. We can only merely hint, and that's what we're doing. I'm suggesting probably three Heineken, two Coronas because you're going to be cleaning that port, you know. So anyway, but you get to get, you don't have to pay gym fees, mate. You get to do your gym here, you know, so happy days. All right, let's get this one out the way and get the next one. All right, uh, uh, get ready because I'm going to start videoing soon. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm oh, ready. Look, I hope you're ready because we're already videoing. We're ready. Should we start again? Let's no, go. Ready? Okay, so we're ready now. Right, I just want right. to point out, see that stay? See in the right-hand top corner of the picture, that stay, that bracket? That gets in the way of getting a really stuck number three out, but this one's not too bad. We've already cracked it loose. Do you want to give it a little bit more, mate, just carefully and just... Uh... This one will be easy. I can already see it coming up. Oh, it's got tight again. It's Nah, so now I've changed my mind. It's going to be very similar to the other one. Oh, okay, so nah, just stop there. What we're going to do now, it's going to be more slabs, actually. We're going to remove that stay, that bracket out of the way, because you need more room to move. We thought it was going to, when it first moved, it had a bit of that crunchy sound that sounded like it had a bit of oil and a bit of carbon there, but now it's got that squeaky sound. Squeaky means it's dry. So I revised what I said, and it's going to come out very similar to the other one because you don't get that dry squeaky if you've got oil, okay? So let's get that uh, stay out of the way, and then we'll have another crack. Now have a look at these old quality Sid, look at that, Sid Chrome's we're using. Look at this, Forge Sid Chrome. Can you turn that one over, please, mate? Look at this, Siddons Lock and Tool Company, Melbourne, Australia, mate. Look at that. Is this the old school quality we got here or what, you know? Oh, are you ready? Yeah, I hope you're ready. It doesn't look like you're ready. I'm oh, already yeah. rolling. Anyway, how'd you like that, guys? The old shifters, where'd they come from? They're older than me, hey? Told you, my grandfather is the old school mechanic, mate. Used to own the servo. The Shell Servo in Heidelberg back in the day. What would it be, 19, 19, probably in the 1950s or something like that. 50s, 60s or something like that. So if you're around Heidelberg, the Shell Servo, I don't even know exactly where it was, but 
This one looks like it's moving pretty well, but what happens is they come to a stop. If you need a rest, mate, just let us know and we'll, uh... This one's come out easy compared to the other one. We're not only going to be able to change the, uh, what can we... A couple of bottles, mate, a couple of bottles on this one. No, it's because we're skillful that we can get it out. So it's still uh, five slabs each injector. Five Corona and five Heineken each injector. <clears throat> yeah, it's hard work, isn't it? See, there you go. Have a break, rest, mate. We'll come back to it. Anyway, we don't want to bore you, so we've worked it. We've got it loose. It's just about ready to lift out. And this time, if you can, try and lay it down more quickly and we'll just, uh, without, without the oil running down. Okay, cool. Look at that, see? Just like the other one, what I revised it to. So I was sort of a little bit wrong at the start because I said this one sounded like it had a bit of grit. But it came out really well. Do you want to spin it around 180 for me, please, mate? Just flip it 180 so you can just see the other side of that. Um, yeah. Definitely not too bad compared to those brass washed ones. Now, we've got some up on the wall, you know, those Baileys ones that had the brass washers. A number of different vehicles. Let's just go on over to the wall of foam and have a look to compare the difference, right? These have done nearly 230,000 Ks with copper, not a big deal, only a little bit stuck is how I'd describe these compared to the brass ones that are phenomenally, ridiculously, stupidly stuck where I promise you, I spend hours on those and you come up the next day feeling like you've been in the gym all, all day the day before, you know, like really, it's probably good muscle, but you know, bloody hell, it's sore. Anyway, let's go to the wall now. Like the picture says, brass, too hard. You can see the gasket surface not sealing. But what we came here to look at is the various, this is like one, two, three, four, five different sets on the wall. There's more, we can go more to the left as well, but you know, you got, uh, what's that, six, uh, seven. Anyway, it doesn't matter, right? We're right here at the moment. And the one I want to look, there's a good, um, at the top there, it's got a lot of that orange on it. See how wide it is, really tight. There must be a reaction with the brass that does something different to the copper because these are all within six to 12 months, um, 9,000 Ks, 15,000 Ks, a lot of them no more than 20,000 Ks. Can you see how tight that was, mate, working that back and forth? Can you see how cooked that injector is? And look at all the bits of grit that fell out. You didn't see anything like that with the one we just pulled out, yeah? So that's where I say, those ones, mate, for me, they're a piece of cake because I've dealt with stuff like this. Once you start moving it and the oil runs down, that's what they start to look like. But that was another very difficult one. And this one, this is a prime example. Looks very similar to the one, um, but rest assured, that one is that one is not that one actually because that was a different set of injectors same brand that were over fueling you can see the black tip there um that one is that one as you can see see that one there see the top one is that one they're in rows right that one there is that one there right so that's the similarity that one there's that one there um anyway whatever doesn't matter right same thing here that one there didn't even have the wash there the washes off that one anyway fun and games rest assured I've given you all the information you need to be able to get these out. Because as you can see, they're all out, right? They're all out, no issues. We've just got some cleaning to do now. We're gonna make sure all those debris are out. These are not bad compared to those brass washered units. The brass washers were also available aftermarket. Some workshops would have used them so you could come across these. So I suppose the warning is, you know, if you, I can't do everybody's injectors. Um, can you do everybody's injectors? He can't do everybody's either. We can do what we can do. Um, so that's what we do. And for the rest, all we can do is help you. And that's what these videos are for, helping you understand and give you the solutions. This is how you get them out. You need the very old Sid Chrome shifter or whatever you want to use. That's what works for us. We haven't come up with anything better for, I suppose we didn't need to. We've had a lot of time to think about it over the years. Um, there's no need to buy a puller because often it's not going to get it out usually. If you can get it out with a puller, then the injector's not really stuck. Um, you really need to have a decent quality pry bar and a decent quality shifter and some, some muscles, I suppose. And that's the way to get it out. So, look, I hope that saved you. If you're a bit nervous about it, then you can try and book it into us or one of our workshop partners. We've got Martin, Darren in Sydney. They're awesome. We've got Greg over there in Perth. Um, Dylan over the other side of town in Melbourne and uh, the boys here in Sunshine and obviously we can do a few of these jobs ourselves and we haven't really got anyone else that's 
got the nads to put their hand up and say, hey, I'm a gun, I can do this shit. This is, oh, I just swore, didn't I? Better <laughs> beep, <laughs> can we undo that? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's just leave it in there for once. Sorry about that, guys. See, look, you know, sorry, kids. Every now and then one does slip out because we can do this stuff and, um, you know, it's not a problem for us. Bada bing. Hope you liked it. Hit the like button, subscribe, turn the bell on, share the information. We can't do them all. There's thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of these engines in Australia. And we're just trying to help out with the solutions for the job. It's best avoided. So you can either get the confidence from watching our videos, particularly the full injector replacement videos in the VIP group. Get the experience watching those to get familiar and do it yourself. I will trust you after watching all those videos a lot more than I'd trust anyone else, to be quite honest from the workmanship I've seen being in the industry for a few decades. Anyway, not just this industry, it's the whole world, the whole country, the whole state, you know, without saying how much, the states, the country, or is this country, the states separate countries and all that, and the states and the countries in the world and the way things are going, not good, so I'm just doing my bit to help out. I hope you liked it. Thumb up it, subscribe it, bell on it, and share it. See you guys.